You ever uh, finished a book and wish there was, I don't know, more to explore in its universe? Well, how do authors decide when to expand a story or when to let it stand on its own? Well, you know, uh, today we're basically going to work on uh, what is the difference between a series or a companion novel? Um, so that takes us to a series or companion novel, a guide for writers, okay, to figure out what they are so you could ultimately make the choice to decide what you are interested in doing why is that important well understanding these distinctions can help aspiring authors or uh seasoned authors plan their writing projects more effectively ensuring their stories reach their audience in the most impactful ways uh it helps you also organize those outlines you know this channel's big on outlining and and this process of outlining and knowing if you're going to have a series a saga or a companion. It's going to help you map out books and let you know which narratives go where because companions don't necessarily have the same through line narrative of a series or saga, but it doesn't mean they can't be involved. All right. Um, so, what is a book series or companion? Well, just on the uh, surface level, a book series is a sequence of books with connected narratives that build up upon each novel. Okay, I'll reread that uh, because I studied a little bit. A book series is a sequence. A book series is a sequence of books with connected narratives that build upon each other. A companion novel, however, is a standalone book that complements a series or another novel by exploring different characters, settings, or even timelines within the same universe okay now uh <clears throat> we're we are not going to do a walkthrough uh for this lesson because it's more of an overview than it is a lesson uh however i'm going to go over four tips and tricks that i hope you understand the values of those uh, uh tasks uh as in do i want to have a companion or do i want to have a series So uh, let's dive right into it, uh, because why not? All right. Oof. So, you know, because uh, first we have to identify what a series is versus a companion novel. And the short of it is that series characteristics look for continuous story arcs reoccurring characters and unresolved conflicts that span across multiple books companion novels usually have the traits of you know being a standalone uh their stories expand the universe per se or might go on side stories of the main narrative without requiring readers to follow a series order these are just stories that sort of exist within the world and just add more value to the overall world and, uh, you know, the mythos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, a good example of this would be if we look at uh, the first three uh, Star Wars films that were released, uh, which would be four, five, and six. Um, before number four starts, there's a movie called uh, Rogue Squadron. Um, a rogue one, I'm sorry, rogue one. And, uh, uh, in that film, it's actually the story of them, the going to get the information that will lead to the destruction of the death star. So, um, that's a different, that's an example of one movie being a companion and, uh, the three other movies being a part of a series. Okay. Uh, and there are no other movies except for the, those three movies. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The long of it, though, if you really want to kind of jump into it, you know, the continuous story arc element is important because it's a series, uh, because a series typically features a long overreaching narrative that does expand across multiple books. Uh, this gives you a chance to really say to yourself, hey, I know that I'm not going to resolve everything. I'm going to resolve the main narrative for this one novel. So it feels like a complete story. 
but I know that I'm going to leave some threads open, maybe introduce newer threads within Act 3, uh, maybe a hint to things at the conclusion of the book leading into the next book, things like that. Uh, but ultimately, each installment builds upon the last, advancing a central plot and often ending with a cliffhanger to maintain reader interest and continuity. All right. Uh, the other thing is characters in a series evolve over time, facing new challenges and growing from their experiences. You know, the reader's deeper connection with these characters across multiple books is a core appeal to series. More importantly, if your character is the same from the first page of the first book uh, all the way to the last page of the last book in the series, there might be an issue. However, the pushback on that is, is it a detective story? You know, is, is it a, you know, whatever the case may be, maybe it's a guy or a girl detective and they're stagnant, you know, like sometimes it happens. The stories around them change and that's okay too. Um, that usually ends up being companions, you know, like the detective series. Uh, but they can be a series, but rarely do crime store crime books with a, you know, like imagine the castle, if I may, as a show. He had a character in his stories uh, that was based on uh, the character that he fell in love with in the show. And it was just the, a, it was a case by case basis. They were companions because they expanded the broader world and the characters and stuff like that. But it wasn't a long lasting narrative. Uh, however, if you did connect them, that there was like one major case that they were working on through all of the books, but uh, they were doing all these smaller cases in between. That might be something. Um, but the point, the point is you do want to see the characters grow and change over the course of a series. All right. Uh, but it's not, it's not, it's not the be all end all. The other thing about, <coughs> I'm sorry about that. The other thing about uh, a series is unlike a standalone book, Series often leave major conflicts or mysteries unresolved until later books, providing a hook that keeps readers coming back for more. And that's usually why a detective series isn't necessarily a series per se. They're, you know, uh, unless there's something greater and deeper in there, like uh, the in death series and stuff like that. I believe there's connecting uh, arcs uh, and stuff like that and storylines going on uh, through the books. Um, but the standalone stories, while they uh, they are set in the same universe as a series, companion novels have more of a self-contained narrative. They don't require the reader to follow previous books to maintain uh, uh, any continuity or to feel accessible. You know, you don't have to read eight Brandon Sanderson books just to go, all right, I'm going to read this offshoot book. But what's nice about companion books is they can offer you know, uh, a secondary character or, or I should say they, sh they can offer you to explore a secondary character or maybe experience the same story from a different POV. All right. Okay. Number two, deciding between a series and a companion. The short of it, you know, consider if your story has enough depth and complexity to sustain multiple books to become a series, or if it's better suited to explore different aspects in a standalone format companion novel uh think about your target audience's commitment you know series often require a larger commitment while companion novels can attract casual readers um i wrote this as uh an idea to just get you to kind of like think about what you're interested in and not have a definitive answer um however my definitive answer is i believe any story no matter how small can be expanded uh, between hundreds of books, if you really wanted to, because you can, if, if you watch some of my outlines, especially the uh, the series or saga outlining process playlist, you'll see that it starts with just coming up with a narrative, just a complete narrative in itself, not even thinking of books. And then what it does is it takes that narrative and breaks it up. Sometimes you can break it up into four separate books. Sometimes you can break it up into five. Sometimes. You can do whatever you want with it, but what you do is you end up taking smaller chunks out of that full narrative, and then you spread those few elements of that smaller narrative and then fill in the blanks and create something bigger and a little bit more in-depth. But again, it really comes down to what you're interested in doing. And ultimately, uh, you know, if it's if it's a story right on the surface, 
that you know you can expand into a series, that might be the way to go. But if you kind of want to play with ideas, there's nothing wrong with companion books. Now, the long of it is, you know, consider consider the scope. You know, a series is suitable if the, pl the plot or character arcs need extensive development over time, which cannot be su su uh, sufficiently covered in a single book. Now, you could discover that, too, while you're working on a companion book. You might be writing it and realize it's bulking up. The word count is getting up there. You know, if you're at 200 words, you might be like, maybe I don't want to have a 200 word count. And then you're like, well, let me finish the book. And then you're like, oh, I'm at 300,000, um, 400,000. Oh, I just hit 500,000 words. This book may be longer than it needs to be. How do I break it up? I could turn it into a series, you know? But the other thing is, like, maybe there are stories within that book, okay, that you can actually explore through separate books. In fact, you can take one story, right, and allow things to kind of happen but we're not really seeing it we just know like a character goes off or this happens and then you can make a companion book that follows the same storyline but now the the main protagonist is that secondary or tertiary character and they're exploring the same sequence of events uh but there's like other things that are happening on it's what were they doing before they found uh, a connection to this character you know what were they doing when this character was doing that? You know, because when you're following a protagonist, it's their POV. And sometimes you don't really jump POVs. You don't, I, if you do an epic fantasy, a lot of times you'll give chapters to different POVs, but they're like one or two, maybe even three chapters here and there. Um, especially if your main protagonist is really driving the book, right? So uh, with a companion, you could just go, well, I'm going to go back to that story and just follow this character. And it's a different story because it's a different experience from that character. You know? um, so, you know, you have to think about that. Uh, the, the other thing is commitment level. You know, like if you're thinking of a saga or a series, there is a big commitment to that. You know, you're, you're going to be dedicating yourself to one world, one story. Uh, there are ways around this, though. You can make five or six different series. You can make one series and then make a whole bunch of companion books. You can make one series and then work write a thriller here, an OR there, um, a superhero story there, all right? And then just, you know, one book for the series, one book for something else, one book, the second book for the series, another book for something else. You know, find out what works for you so you don't get exhausted or burnt out on one concept. Benefits. So the short of it is, you know, a series, the series advent advantages really is, you know, you get to build a more extensive world and develop characters deeply over time, which can more often than not lead to a more engaging and loyal fan base. Whereas companion novels, uh, they usually offer more flexibility in narrative style and the ability to explore various elements of the world without altering the main storyline. Uh, something I always uh, found interesting is when you read a series and then the companion books take place a hundred years or a thousand years earlier or so forth, a hundred or a thousand years after Star Wars used to do that. You know, the, the actual extended universe before they were like, none of that is canon. Like it would explore different areas. I mean, the old Republic is, you know, even just as a game, not even just the books, the game to sit there and explore that story was interesting. Because it doesn't influence the main... Like, we don't have to worry about Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. We get to worry about other stuff, you know? But the long of it is, you know, extended narratives in a series that do allow the depth in character development and world building. Readers actually get to kind of follow these characters grow and develop, and they get to learn with them, and they get to see them change, and they be, sort of become friends with them because they're, they're watching them become something they were to something they weren't. If you're looking at the Game of Thrones, even as a series, just visually, we're watching Arya start off as a naive uh, little girl uh, uh, turn into somebody who saves the world. You know, and she has a completely different personality. She's colder. She's more and colder isn't necessarily bad. It's just she's numb to a lot of stuff that has happened to her and her experiences. You know, and if you look at all the care, John, uh, even Rob, when Rob dies, by the time spoiler, alert, by the time Rob dies, he's a completely different character from the first time we see him, etc. <laughs> 
But the other thing about it is uh, the benefits of a, a long form series is that the series itself affords space to develop sophisticated plots that can evolve and expand, providing a richer and more immersive experience. Even for my series right now, that is also Saga, but it's based on uh, three separate series that all kind of interconnect. Um, uh, standalone series. They're, they're three separate standalone series uh each one with five books and uh but in all the books they connect to the larger picture of the saga and in all the books uh or i should say it, within the series themselves each book connects to the larger series itself and ultimately will lead uh to something in the future series right so there's seeding in there so if you read later books you can go back and be like oh it was there it was always there right so that's the fun of a series or a saga whereas you know, uh, with a standalone, you know, authors can explore various narrative styles and focus on different themes or characters in the same world without altering the main series trajectory. Uh, again, uh, I'm writing a fantasy, an epic fantasy right now, but uh, I also have future plans for other style books within that series. Not that series, that world. Uh, one is indeed a noir. One is uh, a little bit more in the future because it's it takes place in more of a middle the Middle Ages kind of time frame. Um, obviously, it's its own world. It's not Earth, but it takes place you know where there's kings and queens. Except I. You'll, as you read the book, I'm I'm eradicating the, I I'm subverting the kings and queens element, um, but uh, you know there are dragons, wizards, knights, etc. Uh, but there I have a future to that. So there's a more modern experience within that world, and then I also have books that kind of explore before uh, the Middle Ages. Uh, you know, like you think of the Roman times, except like in my world, right? So, um. But the styles will be different, you know. The the noir will be completely different, or the, the it's more of like a noir detective kind of style book. And then I have another one that is more uh, cerebral, okay. Um, and then I have another one that is a, a, an ensemble where it's um, it's like a thriller, like you know what's going on kind of thing. So that's the fun of having a world that you create where you say, oh, I can do a series, but I could also do these standalone books that are sort of one-offs, you know? <sighs> Number four. World versus series dependency. The short of it is, you know, discuss with yourself and figure it out, you know, write out the ideas and think whether the companion novels can exist independently within the same world without a, a direct ties to a particular series. Uh, to providing uh, fresh perspectives on background stories that enhance the main narrative. Like imagine you have a character and you follow them through the series and it builds them up. Or maybe you have a protagonist and there's like a, a character that's in the story, but they don't really get focused on. Uh, but you build them up in the story and then you do a book on them before they were that thing. And you get to kind of see how they became that thing. Uh, so that could be a companion book because now you get to explore a character a little bit more in depth, but ultimately companions, uh, companion novels can enrich the series universe by focusing on standalone stories that resonate with, uh, companion novels can enrich the world and, uh, help standalone stories that resonate with the established world yet remain narratively independent and creating uh, companion novels that do not require familiarity with a primary series can attract a wider or audience as well potentially drawing more readers into exploring the main series again i have one that takes place in a more modern time even though it's a new, it's its own world and i have one that takes place in a more medieval time and i have one that takes place in a more um uh, you know, further back uh, to the Roman kind of times. I also have one that's sort of like the beginning of time, you know, where it's all about the gods uh, and like the first God War. Um, but then I have futuristic. I have, you know, space travel uh, because it's much further in the world. And also in in, in the universe, there are two planets. Um, there are three planets that exist that have livable life uh, that are fairly close to one another. Uh, but the way they rotate around the two suns makes it so, uh, you know, it takes a long time for them to kind of coexist. So I have other worlds where I can explore them that are completely different uh, than the world I want. 
And that's the deal. So before I go any further, you know, if, if you're enjoying this lesson uh, and, and getting a, a good insight into what a series is and a companion and you want to understand writing in general, uh, you know, hey, hit the subscribe button and uh, press that bell icon so you don't miss out. OK, um, like I said, we're not going to do a walkthrough. So we're going to jump right to the question. Which do you prefer as a reader or writer? A deep dive into a series or, uh, you know, do you like to, a nice exploration into a uh, companion novel to see more broad single uh, single style stories? Uh, if so, why? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, final thought on this whole thing. You know, when choosing between developing a book series or a companion novel is a significant decision that hinges not just on the scope of your story, but also on your goals as a writer. Each format serves distinct narrative purposes and caters to different reading uh, reader expectations. A series allows for the deep development of characters and plot over time, ideal for complex stories that require extensive exploration. In contrast, though, a companion novel offers flexibility allowing you to expand on the universe you've created, delve into new perspectives, and explore side stories without the constraints of your main narrative. Now, whether you choose to write a series or a companion novel, each approach provides unique opportunities to enrich your literary world. Series can build deep emotional connections and lead to a highly engaged readership that grows with each installment, whereas companion novels, meanwhile, can breathe new life into the world you've built, providing fresh tales and insight that might not fit within the main storyline, but which still holds significant appeal and add depth to the overall setting. For example, again, if I have an action adventure or if I have a thriller or I have a noir, they're all set in the same world. Some some stories, myths and characters will overlap um, and people might say, oh, let me check out this other part. Uh, but, you know, it's also important to consider the marketability of your work in general, if that is your goal to make a living uh, selling some books there. You know, a series often attract dedicated readers who are more likely to invest in multiple books. Well, companion novels can capture the interest of those looking for a less committal yet enriching experience. Understanding your target audience and their reading preferences can guide you in making the most appropriate choice for your project. Regardless of the path you choose, keeping your readers engaged is paramount. Okay? Because uh, for a series, you want to ensure each book maintains strong, compelling narratives that make readers engage for you. You know? Uh, where they're like, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to this next book. They become eager, right? So, for companion novels, you want to focus on strong standalone stories that still uh, resonate with fans of the original series. Each book should add something valuable and intriguing to the world you've created. But don't be afraid to experiment. No, each format offers different challenges and rewards. Again, series allow you to grow your characters, while companion novels allow you to offer a canvas for exploring secondary themes or characters that didn't get much spotlight. You can use these opportunities to vary your storytelling and keep your creative juices flowing. If you're doing epic fantasy and you're dealing with 250 to 300,000 words, your companion could end up being maybe 80,000 words where it's a short, a short experience compared to the epic fantasy. But whatever you do, writing either a series or a companion novel requires an ability to adapt and respond to the reader feedback. Each new book is a chance to refine your style and respond to your audience, enhancing your craft and deepening your narrative world while forming your writer's voice. Next video in the series, uh, writing terminology, plot twist versus pinch. So uh, what is the difference between a plot twist and a pinch? Uh, the reason that comes up is because if you follow the 27 uh, chapter outline or the 27 plot point outline, which are both the same, just different names. Uh, in there, there are a few pinches for some of the plot points. And uh, they are those pin, uh, those plot points can either be a plot twist or a pinch. Uh, it's something you get to choose. But what is the difference? So we'll go over that. With that said, uh, you know, uh, as always, peace and harmony, truth in action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye!